SpaceX's eighth flight of the Starship rocket was a remarkable blend of success and setbacks. While the launch tower successfully carted the Super Heavy booster, the Starship upper stage failed as it climbed toward space, just like Flight 7 in January. Let's break down the mission in detail to understand what happened. The real reason is far more surprising. Starship Flight 8, comprising Ship 34 and Booster 15, lifted off from Starbase on Thursday evening, embarking on an ambitious suborbital mission. The launch was a spectacular sight, with all engines performing nominally during liftoff and the ascent. It marked the second flight of the next-gen Starship Block 2 prototype, featuring numerous hardware and software enhancements to improve performance and reliability. The vehicle passed through maximum aerodynamic pressure 62 seconds after liftoff, a key milestone that tests the rocket's structural integrity. Approximately 2 minutes and 40 seconds into the flight, the booster's outer and center engines shut down as planned, leaving the inner three engines to continue burning. Shortly afterward, Ship 34 successfully ignited all six of its engines and separated from the booster stage. Once again, the Starship hot stage separation system demonstrated flawless performance. After separation, Booster 15 executed a quick flip maneuver and reignited its center engines for the boost backburn, but two of the ten center engines failed to restart. A similar issue occurred in Flight 7, where one engine failed to reignite due to a low power condition in the igniter system. While SpaceX implemented fixes after that incident, some issues persist and must be addressed before the next flight. However, the booster stayed on course, and after the boost backburn, the hot stage ring was jettisoned to reduce mass. With systems nominal and health checks complete, the flight director commanded the booster to return for a catch attempt. Six minutes and 30 seconds into the mission, the booster initiated its landing burn. One previously unresponsive engine reignited, but the other remained offline, preventing a fully controlled descent. As the booster neared the tower, the center 10 engines shut down, leaving the final three to guide it into the catch arms. Despite the engine issue, the booster successfully touched down, marking the third successful catch attempt and demonstrating the precise coordination between the booster and the tower's catch arms, which exchanged real-time feedback for a controlled landing. Booster 15's upgraded avionics, including a more advanced flight computer, improved power distribution, and integrated smart batteries, enhanced its ability to execute precise maneuvers. Complementing these upgrades, the tower's enhanced radar sensors provided more accurate tracking, further improving the reliability of the catch system. After landing, Booster 15 was lowered onto the launch mount, and SpaceX is preparing to transport it to the production site for inspection. While the booster was being caught, Ship 34 continued its ascent into space with a series of ambitious objectives. The upper stage was designed to perform an in-space engine relight, deploy four Starlink satellite simulators, test new heat shield tile upgrades during re-entry, and ultimately execute a controlled, targeted splashdown in the Indian Ocean. Trouble first became evident when a fire appeared on the engine bell of one of the Raptor vacuum engines. It appears that a leak in the engine's regenerative cooling lines allowed methane to escape, which then ignited. For context, regenerative cooling is a technique in rocket engines where the cryogenic fuel or oxidizer is circulated through channels in the engine nozzle before being injected into the combustion chamber. This process absorbs excess heat from the engine, preventing overheating and simultaneously preheating the propellant to improve combustion efficiency. Shortly after the initial fire, the affected engine shut down, followed by the loss of all three inner sea level engines. One of the screens at Mission Control displayed engines failing and even exploding, providing a visual clue of the unfolding catastrophe. While the exact sequence of events remains under investigation, it is possible that the fire on the Raptor vacuum engine compromised nearby systems, damaging avionics or pressurization lines, and triggered cascading failures. SpaceX later stated that an energetic event occurred in the aft section of the vehicle, which led to the failure of multiple engines. However, they did not specify the precise trigger. Given that this was only the second flight using the redesigned propellant distribution system of the Block 2 ship, there are several possible explanations for the failure. One possibility is a water hammer effect, where sudden changes in propellant flow, such as rapid valve closures or cavitation, created pressure surges in the system. If such a pressure spike occurred in the methane cooling lines, it could have led to a structural failure, causing the observed leak. Another potential factor is pogo oscillations, a form of combustion instability that occurs when pressure fluctuations in the engines interact with the propellant feed system. If the redesigned propellant system changed the damping characteristics, certain sections of the cooling lines might have been subjected to higher stress, 
leading to fitty cracks or weld failures over the course of the flight. Additionally, cavitation, where vapor bubbles form in low-pressure regions of the fuel lines, could have played a role. If the new propellant system altered the flow dynamics, cavitation could have led to local material erosion in the cooling channels, eventually resulting in a leak. Finally, insufficient pressure regulation might have led to localized overpressurization and subsequent failure of the cooling lines, suggesting that SpaceX may need to revise the cooling line geometry, reinforce welds, or incorporate additional pressure dampening methods. The next generation Raptor V3 could help mitigate the issues observed in recent flights by potentially improving the propellant distribution system. If the new design includes enhanced valve controls and more precise pressure regulation, it could help reduce sudden pressure spikes that may have contributed to system failures. Additionally, if SpaceX has reinforced the cooling channels and optimized flow dynamics, it might lower the risk of cavitation while also dampening vibrational stresses and pogo oscillations, ultimately improving engine stability and reliability. Publicly shared footage after the incident captured the ship's uncontrolled re-entry and its subsequent destruction when the onboard flight termination system was activated, similar to what occurred during Flight 7. The activation of the FTS suggests that the vehicle had reached a point where regaining control was impossible, and destruction was necessary to prevent any potential hazards. The explosion scattered debris across the sky, which descended into the Atlantic Ocean, near Bahamas and the Turks and Caicos Islands. Interestingly, NASA's GOES weather satellites captured the explosion from orbit, providing a unique space-based perspective of the event. Meanwhile, astronaut Don Pettit observed and photographed the ship's breakup in the upper atmosphere and its descent back to Earth from the ISS. Additionally, weather radar data from the Bahamas showed that debris remained suspended in the atmosphere for at least 30 minutes following the FTS activation. Following the anomaly, the FAA promptly announced that it was aware of the incident and had initiated a formal investigation. Until this investigation is complete and SpaceX has implemented any necessary design modifications and corrective actions, Starship will remain grounded. Shortly after the incident, the FAA activated a debris response area, temporarily slowing and redirecting aircraft over the region where debris was expected to fall. According to FAA guidelines, such measures are only taken if debris is likely to fall outside pre-designated aircraft hazard zones, thereby posing risks to air traffic or populated areas. SpaceX, however, assured that Starship remained within its designated launch corridor and that any surviving debris would have landed within the pre-planned area. Although encountering anomalies during flight tests is not entirely unexpected when integrating numerous new advancements, the consecutive failures of the Block 2 vehicle highlight the importance of revalidating these changes before proceeding. Both Flight 8 and Flight 7 anomalies involved propellant leakage but originated from different failure points. The Flight 8 leakage occurred on the engine bell, and in contrast, the Flight 7 failure was caused by harmonic oscillations in the upper stage feed lines, leading to structural fatigue, fuel leaks, and fire, ultimately resulting in Starship's premature re-entry. To prevent this, Ship 34 featured reinforced feed lines, optimized fuel management, adjusted thrust profiles, and improved venting with a nitrogen purge. These fixes seem to have worked in Flight 8, but new issues emerged that must be resolved before the next mission. While the failure may appear to be a setback, it represents an invaluable learning opportunity. Data collected during the flight, ranging from engine performance metrics to the observed behavior of debris, will inform future design iterations and operational strategies, ultimately contributing to a more robust and capable Block 2 Starship. Despite the setback, SpaceX remains committed to its aggressive development timeline and continuous improvement. Preparation for the next flight test, Flight 9, is already underway. The Super Heavy booster for this mission, Booster 16, recently underwent cryogenic proof testing at Massey's outpost. Two separate tests were performed, one focusing on the upper methane tank and another involving both propellant tanks. By filling these tanks with liquid nitrogen, Engineers ensured not only the reliability of the plumbing but also gathered critical data on the booster's ability to withstand various flight stresses and detect potential leaks. Booster 16 will soon return to the production facility for engine installation prior to static fire testing. Meanwhile, the Starship upper stage for Flight 9, Ship 35, is currently in Megabay 2 and undergoing preparations for its own cryogenic proof test. Prior to Flight 8, SpaceX submitted an FCC application for telemetry and communications authorization during Flight 9, which originally included plans for an orbital return attempt, where the Starship would be caught by the launch tower arms, a major milestone for reusability. However, due to the Flight 8 anomaly, 
SpaceX may revise its plan and postpone the ship catch maneuver to a future mission. Flight 9 will closely mirror the mission profile and objectives of Flight 8, with a targeted controlled splashdown in the Indian Ocean. Only after a fully successful splashdown in the next flight test will SpaceX consider a recovery attempt using the tower arms. Elon Musk described Flight 8 as a minor setback, stating that the next ship will be ready in four to six weeks. However, the Flight 9 launch date depends on completing the Flight 8 investigation and implementing necessary design fixes to Ship 35. These design modifications may be validated through a long-duration static fire test that simulates the failure scenarios observed during Flight 8, while testing various thrust levels and hardware adjustments. In summary, while the recent anomaly represents a setback, it also provides essential data that simulations and ground tests cannot replicate. SpaceX's iterative development process ensures that every failure brings critical insights, leading to rapid recovery and continuous improvement. With rigorous investigations and thorough design reviews, there is every reason to expect that Flight 9 will build on these lessons and mark another significant step toward achieving a fully successful Starship flight.